My name is Michael, and I was nominated for Canada's Worst Driver in Season 2. Back then, British Columbian Michael had a Mercedes, and he couldn't parallel park it to save his life. Get over any time. Uh, I just bumped into their van. These days, Michael can't parallel park his Lincoln Continental. Crud. Michael was nominated as Canada's worst driver ever. You're not supposed to hit other vehicles. By his friend Yolanda. My name is Shelby, and I was nominated for Canada's Worst Driver, Season 3. Back then, oh. Shelby couldn't ride a bike. Oh, boy. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. These days, he bikes all over Calgary's designated bicycle lanes. But according to Ellerick, his brother... Shelby is still a terror in designated car lanes. Wrong way, Shelby, Shelby, wrong way. Right, right. Just watch the fence. And then there's Angelina. I was Canada's worst driver in season five. Back then, Angelina treated her car as if it were a beauty salon. I'm a multitasker. These days, Angelina treats her car as if it were a beauty salon and a delicatessen. This is my lunch. Ah, man. Oh! She'll be joined in rehab by her friend, Christine. I tell my kids not to run with knives and you drive with them. My name is Dale. I have been nominated. I was nominated. My name is Dale. I was nominated. Then Dale intentionally ran through stop signs made illegal turns and broke the speed limit. This is what I do. These days, her nephew, Danny, says she still does all those things, but she's unaware of it. We're coming up to a school zone. I know. So what? There's a speed limit at school zone. Right. You're doing 60. <laughs> is this thing here, like, is that, like, tell you how many kilometers you're going? Your speedometer? Yeah. Normally. My name is Sly, and I was nominated for Canada's Worst Driver, Season 7. Back then, Sly liked to let go of the wheel so he could eat burgers while he drove. These days, Sly's brother-in-law, Fred, is concerned that Sly still doesn't have two hands on the wheel. See, this is a little easier to eat. Because I have improved. What's easier to eat? Chicken strip. As opposed to? A hamburger. And that means you have improved. Yep. My name is Kevin, and I was Canada's worst driver, season eight. Back then, Kevin lived in a small town and was incredibly overconfident. Just want to catch those Kojaks with the Kodak and before they catch me. These days, Kevin has moved to a suburb of Vancouver. Watch out. Ah. And according to his boyfriend, Lenny, Kevin is no longer overconfident. Don't shout like that. Boy, you were getting really close, so that's why I shouted. Uh, scared me. Some people think that a car's mirrors are there to do your makeup or do your hair. But in fact, using a car's side mirrors is a critical part in reversing if you want to take the turns correctly. So. For their next challenge here at our rehab center, we'll see how well Canada's worst drivers use their mirrors by reversing this limousine. Hey, man. Hey, thank you. As they go around a figure eight course, if they don't use their side mirrors, don't go change it. They'll fail. This limousine that they'll be reversing may be an intimidating five and a half meters long, but the figure eight course they have to maneuver it around is so wide, it can be done without ever having to stop and reposition. This is how easy this is, guys. It's a piece of cake, really. As I begin showing how easy this course is to drive, Kevin is wishing the vehicle had a rear-facing video camera. Steering and mirrors work, Kevin. That's all you need is steering and mirrors. When going around any tight turn in reverse, the front end of the vehicle will always swing wide. 
So, hugging the turn's inside edge is critical. But if you just use your mirrors, this is really not that hard. The passenger side of the vehicle was on the inside edge of the figure eight's first looping turn. For the second half, the driver's side will be on the inside edge. Using the mirrors, that's all it is, guys. It's mirrors, 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 mirrors. Oh, wow. wow, look at him. He's just flying through the course. I know. He makes it just look like child's play. Oh, wow. This course is child's play, if you use your mirrors. And that is how you do a figure eight in a limousine with the help of your mirrors. My time isn't fast, but my motion was constant. Listen to me loud and clear. If you don't use your side mirrors, you will not accomplish this task. Can I go first? Yeah, sure, you can go first if you want to. Angelina wants to get this over and done with. Your chariot awaits, folks. While Canada's worst drivers ever take up residence in the back seat, Angelina plays with the limo's old phone. We can go to the Bahamas if you want. Sure. Hang up the phone, Angelina. It's time to go. Watching this event from the safety of their studio is our team of experts. Really important to understand front end swing. It doesn't matter what size the vehicle is. Tim Danter is our general driving instructor. Shamala Kiru is our resident psychologist. Billy Flaterno teaches high performance driving skills. And former cop Cam Woolley is our legal expert. She's acting like she's never seen such a thing as an automobile. Angelina takes off. Bye. Have a good, safe drive. Oh, my God, I'm moving. Okay, watch me. Angie, stop. Without even adjusting her mirrors. Go forward, reposition yourself, and turn right. Oh, okay. To reposition herself, Angelina should do an S-turn. But that's not what she does at all. The S-turn that Angelina should make would be driving forwards to her right, then to her left, then pulling straight back so she's on the inside part of the turn. It's a technique we've taught her before, but like I say, she doesn't do it. What is this S-turn? I don't remember any S-turn. Somebody's getting frustrated. Watch your front end. We chose this big vehicle so we could demonstrate what happens when we talk about front end swing. And what we mean is, while the back might make a corner, the front swings like that and can easily hit things. Ah! Can you see anything in that mirror? What mirror? Bring the mirror back to a position where you can use it. Honestly, if I saw Angelina as a character in a movie, I wouldn't believe the movie. But I'm here to tell you, she's not kidding, she's not faking, she's not pretending, she's not a character in a movie. She's a real person with a real driver's license. Who really drives like this? Maybe your phone B, he's trying to direct you. No, I gotta take this phone call. Why? Leave it. Hi, baby. While Angelina focuses on her boyfriend... Angelina, keep looking at me while you're driving so you can steer towards me. It's easy to see why the Canadian Automobile Association says that cell phones are now the number one cause of crashes. She is trying to drive, well, drive this monstrosity in reverse while she's on the phone? <laughs> Put the phone down and talk to... Listen to Andrew. Oh, my God. You can bring it back to me. You can bring it back to here. She has no idea where she is. She hung up on Andy. Yeah, I'm losing my other mind. If she continues at this emotional level, getting frustrated, getting flooded, throwing tantrums, I don't think that rehab is the right place for her. Being on public roads certainly isn't the right place for her. This. Angelina has no concept of how dangerous she is. How was that? I didn't hit anything. Look at everything's still standing. When we come back, the rest of Canada's worst drivers ever reverse our limousine. 
I'm asking myself the same thing. To see if Canada's worst drivers ever know how to use their side mirrors, we're having them reverse a limousine around a figure eight course. Oh, I'm losing my other mind! Will Michael use his passenger side mirror? I'm using it right now. Amazing! Will he use his driver's side mirror? No. Yikes! You want to use both mirrors, Michael. You can't use just one. After a few more mishaps, Michael gets the hang of proper mirror use. You're doing great, Michael. Thank you. But he does tend to get mesmerized by one mirror. Oh, you're using the wrong mirror. Other mirror. Instead of referencing both mirrors. Other mirror, other mirror. Coming around the second loop of the eight, Michael has to stop and reposition 12 times. Actually, I think I'll reposition a little. But he doesn't hit another thing. Well done, sir. Kevin goes without referencing his mirrors. Look at your mirrors. I am looking at my mirrors. Look, you're going to hit something right okay, away. Okay, all right, no problem. Kevin. No problem. Don't freak out. I've got this. While Kevin gets repositioned, so does Angelina. You know what the mirrors are feeling, eh? You know what the back of his face? Well, normally they go to grads and they have chaperones in them, eh? Why would you think they have a mirror on the ceiling, Shelby? They have side mirrors so you can see yourself approaching a tight squeeze. Oh, wait, wait. I'm getting too close to that red thing. Too close, too close. It's nice to see that Kevin is using his side view mirror. Kevin is so focused on his driver's side mirror. Watch your front and swing. Yeah. He's failing to notice the other side. Behind you, you're hitting things. What? Yes, you are. Look behind you. When Kevin finishes, he's still hitting things. <laughs> Dale has no idea what she should see in her mirrors. You can see me? Mm -hmm. Can you see this hand? Yep. Perfect. That's what you need to see. It seems that Andrew has to start at the beginning with her every time she puts the car in reverse. I have to re-explain basic reverse steering to Dale. If you want to go to your right in reverse, do you turn left or right? Left. No! I have to re-explain the S-turn to Dale. It's like a brand new lesson every time. And then I have to re-explain front end swing. This is the front end swing. You know how to get this away from that, right? She's not thinking at all. Andrew's doing all the thinking, and she's not even following his direction. Turn the other way, Dale. Coaching Dale is a never-ending experience. Dale, do you see me? You should hear. Do I see you? Here's your other man. Yes. Keep looking at me in the mirror. Keep looking at me in the mirror. It's new every time, isn't it? Yes, it is. Dale has the memory of a goldfish. Is that strange? No. Is that strange? No, the other way. Shelby starts by not seeing the first turn. Shelby, I'm to your right. I'm to your right. Turn your wheel to the right. I'm completely insane. I'm losing my mind. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, OK, what's right to your member of government? Tell them you think there should be more stringent rules on how people get licenses in the first place. Shelby, come on. All the way around that turn, Shelby. All the way around the turn. Way off the course. Shelby needs to hear the truth. You know I love you, buddy, but you suck at reversing. I, I know. Why? How to use his mirrors about a hundred times now. 
I'm the exasperated man waving, hoping to God it works this time. What's that? Slide is probably the worst reverser we had on the show ever. So I has had the advantage of watching five drivers go before him today. But now that Sly's behind the wheel, drive to me. It seems like he learned nothing from being a passenger. You see me in your mirror? Nope. Sure you do. I'm in the guy in your mirror. I'm the big exasperated white guy in your mirror going, for the love of God, just reverse. Sly doesn't notice front end swing. Sly doesn't steer unless Fred tells him to. Turn your wheel. You gotta match the corner. And Sly is stopping so often he may not finish before dark. Sly, you can get this. You can do I'm it, just buddy. a little bit confused here all of a sudden. Sly, you really gotta try. Turn left. Oh, freak. I, I have to go to the washroom. After hours of being patient, people are now starting to flee. Oh, crap. And when I say people... I'm getting out. See you later, buddy. What I mean is there's a spontaneous mass exodus. Okay, what is going on? Good luck, Sly. Nail it. I know who my supporters are. Apparently, Lenny and Elric aren't supporters. Follow that line. You see it in the mirror? You see it happening in the mirror? What? See what in the mirror? You got to. When Michael leaves, Shelby follows. Best limo ride I've ever had, buddy. Best limo ride. Now, Fred is Sly's only passenger. Got to do this. And he also can't take it anymore. Sorry, pal. What oh, a freak. Let me know when you're done, buddy. More than half an hour after he started, Sly is finally finished. Let's go home, buddy. Sure. I'm better at walking than I am at driving. Yeah. Yeah, you are, hey? That's oh. good. Because if you weren't, you'd walk right off a cliff. Oh, yes. When we come back... Oh. Canada's worst drivers ever will show us if they know how to swerve and avoid. If someone's pushing a baby carriage and they get a little bit preoccupied, they might wander right out into the middle of the road. Who's the cutest little baby? Yes, you are. <laughs> get off me. If uh, something suddenly appears in front of your car when you're driving 70 kilometers an hour, what should you do? Well, we've taught Canada's worst drivers over and over and over again that if something appears too soon for them to suddenly stop, they should swerve, avoid, then break. Demonstrating the swerve and avoid technique is the next challenge for Canada's worst drivers ever. Why do you make such a funny face? Eh? Swerve and avoid challenge. Drivers will come down this straightaway at 70k an hour. When they reach this point, a green car made of foam will pop out either here or here. Drivers must then steer through the safe gap on the other side. In past seasons, the skills needed to pass this challenge have been taught to all the nominees for Canada's worst driver ever. They know that if they hit the brake, they'll skid out of control. You touch the brake. They know that if their vision fixates on the object they're trying to avoid, they'll drive straight into it. Sly knows that if he makes no decision at all, mass chaos will ensue. Freak. You couldn't have done that any worse. For this challenge today, our once perfect Camaro will be the vehicle. Now, it is missing a few parts for sure, but 
It still handles like a dream. I'll show you how it's done. Come blasting out of the gates? Wow, this thing goes 70 fast. 60, 70. Nothing's there, nothing's there. Where is it? Jeez. Oh, man. Understanding this non-breaking technique could save a life. That is actually scary. Kevin once needed a sudden swerve. The last time that happened, it was a cat, and I couldn't do that because there was another car on my rear end. But what does the car behind you have to do with your steering ability? The car behind me had nothing to do with my steering ability. It's so confusing sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it is. Go whenever you're ready, sir. Kevin goes the correct speed, but in the moment of truth, Kevin panics and hits the brakes, and that's going to kill his ability to steer. God damn it. Steering is only possible when all the wheels are turning freely. When Kevin slammed on the brake, he skidded in a straight line, even though he tried steering back to his left. And that skidding slid him right off the road. The scariest thing is, Kevin doesn't even know he hit the brake. What happened was I clipped on the left side here, and that caused me to panic. And then what did the panic cause you to do? Caused me to hit the other blocks. When I panic, I lose control. I show Kevin what really happens when he panics. Now do you understand why you lose steering control? Yeah, I hit the brake. So panic turns into instinct, which turns into braking, which turns into disaster. Indeed. Drivers will get two chances at this challenge. Last chance to dance, kids. This time, 20. Lenny calls out the speed and reminds Kevin to not brake. 70, no brake. But Kevin instinctively hits the brake and he skids out of control again. And you hit the brake. Kevin is a braking fool. Maybe you're Canada's worst driver ever. No, I don't think I am. Maybe Shelby is Canada's worst driver ever. Has anything ever popped out in front of you in real life driving? Uh, every day on the roads things pop out at me. Shelby, apparently things pop out at him every day, especially today. Today, instead of going 70, Shelby speeds up to 100, and when the car pops out, he panics and hits the brake! Whoops. That was not good. Shelby locked up the brake while he was steering, and that made his steering ineffective. Shelby, do this for all the dogs in Calgary that might suddenly run out in front of you, okay? For all the dogs in Calgary! Even the poodles! Even the ponies, Andrew! Even the ponies! I think he said poodles. We teach never to hit the brake in this situation because when things get intense, most people who touch the brake floor it and skid out of control. But you can't gently touch the brake. And that's what Shelby does. Breaking without skidding is called threshold breaking. I will not be Canada's worst driver ever. Habitual speeder Dale needs to grasp this avoidance technique. I don't mean I'm gonna do this in St. Catharines. What if a kid darts out the side of behind a car? Well, yeah, but you're not going 70 miles an hour. Okay. Instead of waiting for the phone car to pop out, Dale heads to the right side for no reason. And that's the side we're pulling the phone car to. <laughs> oh, you were... Oh, my God. She was already committed to her lane. It was too late because she had already started making her turn. Dale, run number two. Let's hope it's less disastrous than run number one. This attempt is far less disastrous. When the lime green car pops out, Dale steers through the safe side. Mm. Mm. 
That looks like a guest to me. Dale says that she passed. Did you guess and go to the right? Or I did saw you actually the lime. see the car? I saw the lime. You saw the lime green? I saw the lime. Yes? Yes. If we watch back the tape and I see that you turned before that car popped out. Is it fail? When we come back. The rest of Canada's worst drivers ever do our Swerve and Devoid Challenge. This is so depressing! Canada's worst drivers ever are showing us how well they can avoid a suddenly appearing obstacle. Two years ago, when Sly did this challenge, he panicked and forgot to swerve at all. Did Sly learn that he must make a decision even under duress? We'll find out today, because we're conducting a little experiment. Sly believes our green foam car is going to pop out on one side of the lane and he has to go to the other. We've asked him to go 40k an hour, but we're not going to pull a foam car. What will Sly do? See, I didn't see it ever. Oh. Nothing. He just goes straight through, no reaction. You need to have common sense. There's a wall in front of you. I don't care if, if he doesn't see the object you would think that he would get on the brake. Our experiment has yielded a definitive result. Sly has no common sense. It's little things like that man, that make me wonder if I should drive. With our experiment finished, it's time for Sly to drive. 70. Sly, can he do it? Let's see. This time, the green foam car will pop out to the left. But instead of looking for it, Sly is speeding and guessing. That was definitely a fail. Correct. Oh, freak. Fred hopes this impact has a serious impact on Sly. This challenge is the reason I wanted you here. This very one. During the first two episodes of Canada's Worst Driver Ever, Michael's nominator, Yolanda, has been deathly afraid of being in a vehicle with him thanks to this catastrophic mishap. <laughs> Whoa. So today... I will be providing Yolanda with a safe place to sit. <laughs> My lady, your throne has arrived. Oh, stop. <laughs> and for today's challenge, I will be Michael's passenger. Warp speed, my friend. Okay. Michael correctly drives 70k an hour, but when the phone car pops out, he stares at it, drives towards it, and hits the brake. Not good at all. On his second attempt, go, 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 go! Michael again gets lured in by the flash of green, but he almost recovers. That was the worst possible performance. Oh. oh, Michael. I completely fouled up this one. I don't know why. I really don't know why. Michael stared at the obstacle he needed to avoid. You will note the complete lack, lack of attempt at self-justification. I blew it royally. Angelina has shown up royally hungover again. Really? Don't throw up on me. 
I really feel for her. I think that we need to do everything that we can to get her the support that she clearly needs. I can tell are you crying? Why are you crying? I don't know why I'm crying. Are you nervous? I'm really I'm nervous bad? about everything. Okay. Shh. I can do this. I can do this. I can. I haven't even started yet. I know. I can do this. I can okay. Do this. Stop crying. I can pretty much guarantee you she's going to slam on the brakes and close her eyes simultaneously. Let's hope she doesn't. Don't close your eyes, you idiot girl. Angelina knows that our own car won't pop out until the last possible instant, but that pressure is too much for her. What am I doing? Where's the, why is nothing happening? <laughs> nothing happened! Oh. You're just not steering enough, and I think it's because you're not looking to where you want to go. You need to steer. You can't just hope. Okay. On her second attempt, Angelina is determined to look where she wants to go, but... Look where you want to go. Look where you want to go, baby. Look where you want to go! Angelina stops looking and ultimately ends up on the grass. The worst part of this multi-hit fiasco... ...is that Angelina and Christine both thought it was a success? That's not doing good. That's Christine enabling a bad driver. I thought we made it. We were happy. When we come back, we'll find out who's smooth behind the wheel in our annual water tank challenge. control is a problem for bad drivers. If they hit the gas too hard, or the brake too hard, their vehicle can become unbalanced and mayhem can ensue. Teaching pedal control is the point of our next challenge. That's good. That's good. This year, the water tank test will be done in a beautifully painted Ford Fish that has a tank of water contained on its roof. While motoring on our course, drivers had better be smooth, because if not, the water will slosh out of the tank, into these hoses, and onto their heads. Off we go. The course starts off with a section where drivers must accelerate up to 40k an hour. This will test how smooth their pedal control is. And mine is perfect. Until I approach the wild heart. Ah. Oh! The goose made me hit the brake. Next is a precision steering section. I have to drive through a laneway of rims that eventually funnels me into a concrete corral that I must reverse out of. You have to use your mirrors in this section. Hey! Stop it! Finally! Cue the victory music! Nice! From there, a simple reverse slalom ends it all. You know what? I'm gonna do something I never do. I'm gonna throw caution to the wind and have a bit of fun with the end. Ah! Let's see how Canada's worst drivers do! Before this silliness, I lost 16 liters of water. Saw knows that to escape this challenge drive, he must accelerate... Slow and smooth. But instead of doing that... Sly accelerates suddenly, then panics and hits the brake. Oh, holy cow! Oh, oh, oh. When Sly bangs his way through the rims, whoops, 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 
he winds up with a lot of room to his left in the concrete corral. <sighs> well, let's do a nice turn. So all the way to the left. Doing an S-turn while pinned against a wall. All the way to the right. Is a pointless exercise. Oh, I think the wheel is spinning, but the hamster's dead. When the hamster comes back to life... <laughs> Sly winds up losing... 65 liters of water. Hey, I think I have a dry spot right there. Yeah. In yesterday's reversing challenge, Dale learned to set and use her side mirrors. How's my mirrors? Did you not check your mirrors before we left? No. I gotta concentrate here because there's something about mirrors. Are you watching your mirrors at all? I am. I am. 20 liters of lost water later. These mirrors are kind of deceiving, but they are... This one, objects are closer than they appear. That one, not so much. Okay. Which I didn't one know that. It says it right there. Well, I didn't, I didn't read it. The writing is on the proverbial wall. Hey, I think you're at the finish line. I am. Michael is hair flipping smoothly, but not driving smoothly. I am drunk. Through the rims, Michael is driving like a drowning monkey. You're stopping suddenly. I know. Michael is certainly an optimist. Well, you got rid of half the water. But, or to put it another way, I retained half the water. Kevin is about to learn a valuable driving lesson. When you stop suddenly, any weight in or on your car will shift forward. So, you should always stop smoothly. <laughs> Shelby does well until he hits a foam figure, then drives over its corpse. That bounce broke the water tank. very therapeutic. Angelina is the next driver scheduled on the water tank course, but Angelina is having a therapy session with Shamala, and Shamala is suggesting that our rehab center might not be the best place for Angelina to be right now. I want to finish and do this. It sounds like you're looking for support and you want support, you just haven't been able to find I it. I want to finish. In the end, Angelina convinces Shamala that it would be in her best interest to see this experience through. When we come back, the experts and I decide who this episode's graduate should be. Sly, no way. Really? During this episode, the nominees for Canada's worst driver ever showed us how smoothly they could accelerate and brake. They also displayed their ability to use side mirrors by driving a stretch limousine. Way off the pulse. And they all showed us how well they can react to a sudden obstacle on our swerve and avoid test. Oh, that was definitely a fail. And when Dale did that test, she was adamant that seeing our green pop-out car prompted her to successfully steer to the open space. But that's clearly not true. Dale started turning before the car popped out. Now, she's going to explain herself to our experts. I saw it through my peripheral vision, mm -hmm. the green car. Do you, do you want to see the tape? Because you didn't see the car. Didn't it? No. 
Quindale watches the playback. I'm looking where I want to go. She admits to never seeing the green car. Um, oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> it's a good guess, so that is a fail. Right. I guess my question is, were you having us on, or did you really believe you saw the car? I did believe it. Oh, yes, I did believe it. Yeah, yeah, but now that I see the tape, you were right. You're absolutely right. You actually did not see that green car come out, right? I thought I did. You thought somewhere in your mind, the way that you processed it was you thought you saw something that wasn't actually there, right? Yes. So my question to you is, does that happen often, where you think that you see something that's actually not there? No, 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 no. I, I don't see things that aren't there normally in my life. Do you deserve to graduate this episode? No. Do you want to? Do you want to get no. out of here? No. No one feels they deserve to graduate. I wouldn't say so. No. 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 Uh, well, do I pass any challenges? No, no, and no. So, who will graduate from the rehab center this episode? Let's remind ourselves who's in the running to be Canada's worst driver ever. We have Dale. Should she graduate? No. No. <laughs> no, actually, she should not. Shelby, should he graduate? Did pass the evasive. He did? True, fair enough. Shortlist Shelby's on it. Michael, should he graduate? Well, if we're shortlisting, he did pass the reverse eight. Eh, half pass. Really? It was pretty clumsy. I wouldn't call that a pass exactly. Well, and then the evasive, which I give a lot more weight to, he really bombed, so I, I don't think we can shortlist him. Angelina. <laughs> no way. No. Um, Sly. Boy, that would be one silly shortlist if he's had all these answer that question. No. And Kevin. Kevin did do the best on our reversing challenge. Yeah, but, but when we got to the evasive again, that's the one that mattered. He bombed it. You're kidding me. Shelby's the only person on the shortlist? It's true. Shelby is the only person on the shortlist to graduate. The driving on this third episode of Canada's Worst Driver Ever was pretty poor at its best, and at its worst, it was downright disastrous. In fact, this episode's driving was so bad, there was only one person who even made it under the shortlist of who could get to go home. And guess who that person was, Shelby? It was you, buddy! All right! <laughs> yeah! Shelby, you said so many really memorable things this year at the Rehab Center, but the thing that had the most impact on me was when you were in front of the experts just today and you said that you didn't think you drove well enough to go home. Yeah. So, for that reason, you're not gonna go home. Yeah. Well, Will anyone here ever drive well enough to go home? Or will all six of them ultimately be named Canada's worst driver ever? On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver Ever, the nominees show us how well they can do a three-point turn. They have a tricky task of handling a trailer. Whoa! Oh, oh, holy cow, I'm like jackknifed. And they demonstrate their steering ability on our annual Eye of the Needle Challenge. My name is Michael, and I was nominated for Canada's Worst Driver in Season 2. Back then, British Columbian Michael had a Mercedes, and he couldn't parallel park it to save his life. Get it over any time. Uh, I just bumped into their van. These days, Michael can't parallel park his Lincoln Continental. Crud. Michael was nominated as Canada's worst driver ever. You're not supposed to hit other vehicles. By his friend Yolanda. 
My name is Shelby and I was nominated for Canada's Worst Driver, Season 3. Back then, Shelby couldn't ride a bike. Oh, boy. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. These days, he bikes all over Calgary's designated bicycle lanes. But according to Ellerick, his brother, Shelby is still a terror in designated car lanes. Wrong way, Shelby, Shelby, wrong way. Right, right, just keep watching the fence. And then there's Angelina. I was Canada's worst driver in season five. Back then, Angelina treated her car as if it were a beauty salon. I'm a multitasker. These days, Angelina treats her car as if it were a beauty salon and a delicatessen. This is my lunch. Ah, man. Oh! She'll be joined in rehab by her friend, Christine. I tell my kids not to run with knives and you drive with them. My name is Dale. I have been nominated. I was nominated. My name is Dale. I was nominated. Then Dale intentionally ran through stop signs, made illegal turns, and broke the speed limit. This is what I do. These days, her nephew, Danny, says she still does all those things, but she's unaware of it. We're coming up to a school zone. I know. We still are. There's a speed limit in a school zone. Yeah, you're doing 60. Yes. Is this thing here, like, is that, like, tell you how many kilometers you're going? Your speedometer? Yeah. Normally. My name is Sly, and I was nominated for Canada's Worst Driver, Season 7. Back then, Sly liked to let go of the wheel so he could eat burgers while he drove. These days, Sly's brother-in-law, Fred, is concerned that Sly still doesn't have two hands on the wheel. See, this is a little easier to eat. Because I have improved. What, what, what's easier to eat? Chicken strip. As opposed to? A hamburger. And that means you have improved. Yep. My name is Kevin, and I was Canada's worst driver, season eight. Back then, Kevin lived in a small town and was incredibly overconfident. Just want to catch those Kojaks with the Kodak and before they catch me. These days, Kevin has moved to a suburb of Vancouver. Watch out. Ah. And according to his boyfriend, Lenny, Kevin is no longer overconfident. Don't shout like that. Boy, you were getting really close, so that's why I shouted. Uh, scared me. Some people think that a car's mirrors are there to do your makeup or do your hair. But in fact, using a car's side mirrors is a critical part in reversing if you want to take the turns correctly. So, for their next challenge here at our rehab center, we'll see how well Canada's worst drivers use their mirrors by reversing this limousine. Hey, man. Hey, thank you. As they go around a figure eight course. If they don't use their side mirrors, don't go change it. They'll fail. This limousine that they'll be reversing may be an intimidating five and a half meters long, but the figure eight course they have to maneuver it around is so wide, it can be done without ever having to stop and reposition. This is how easy this is, guys. It's a piece of cake, really. As I begin showing how easy this course is to drive, Kevin is wishing the vehicle had a rear-facing video camera. Steering and mirrors work, Kevin. That's all you need is steering and mirrors. When going around any tight turn in reverse, the front end of the vehicle will always swing wide. So, hugging the turn's inside edge is critical. But if you just use your mirrors, this is really not that hurt. The passenger side of the vehicle was on the inside edge of the figure eight's first looping turn. For the second half, the driver's side will be on the inside edge. Using the mirrors, that's all it is, guys. It's mirrors, 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 mirrors. Wow. Oh, look at him. He, he's just flying through the course. I know. He makes it just look like child's play. Oh, wow. This course is child's play. 
if you use your mirrors. And that is how you do a figure eight in a limousine with the help of your mirrors. My time isn't fast, but my motion was constant. Listen to me loud and clear. If you don't use your side mirrors, you will not accomplish this task. Can I go first? Yeah, sure, you can go first if you want to. Angelina wants to get this over and done with. Your chariot awaits, folks. While Canada's worst drivers ever take up residence in the back seat, Angelina plays with the limo's old phone. We can go to the Bahamas if you want. Sure. Hang up the phone, Angelina. It's time to go. Watching this event from the safety of their studio is our team of experts. Really important to understand front end swing. Doesn't matter what size the vehicle is. Tim Danter is our general driving instructor. Shamala Kiru is our resident psychologist. Billy Platerno teaches high performance driving skills. And former cop Cam Woolley is our legal expert. She's acting like she's never seen such a thing as an automobile. Angelina takes off. Bye. Have a good, hey. safe drive. Oh, my God, I'm moving. Okay, watch me. Angie, stop. Without even adjusting her mirrors. Go forward, reposition yourself, and turn right. Oh, okay. To reposition herself, Angelina should do an S-turn. But that's not what she does at all. The S-turn that Angelina should make would be driving forwards to her right, then to her left, then pulling straight back so she's on the inside part of the turn. It's a technique we've taught her before, but like I say, she doesn't do it. What is this S-turn? I don't remember any S-turn. Somebody's getting frustrated. Watch your front end. We chose this big vehicle so we could demonstrate what happens when we talk about front end swing. And what we mean is, while the back might make a corner, the front swings like that and can easily hit things. Ah! Can you see anything in that mirror? What mirror? Bring the mirror back to a position where you can use it. Honestly, if I saw Angelina as a character in a movie, I wouldn't believe the movie. But I'm here to tell you, she's not kidding, she's not faking, she's not pretending, she's not a character in a movie. She's a real person with a real driver's license. Who really drives like this? Maybe your phone B. He's trying to direct you. No, I gotta take this phone call. Why? Leave it. Hi, baby. While Angelina focuses on her boyfriend... Angelina, keep looking at me while you're driving so you can steer towards me. It's easy to see why the Canadian Automobile Association says that cell phones are now the number one cause of crashes. She is trying to drive, drive this monstrosity in reverse while she's on the phone? <laughs> Put the phone down and talk to... Listen to Andrew. Oh, my God. You can bring it back to me. You can bring it back to here. She has no idea where she is. She hung up on Andy. Yeah, I'm losing my habit mind. If she continues at this emotional level, getting frustrated, getting flooded, throwing tantrums, I don't think that rehab is the right place for her. Being on public roads certainly isn't the right place for her. Angelina has no concept of how dangerous she is. How was that? I didn't hit anything. Look at everything's still standing. When we come back, the rest of Canada's worst drivers ever reverse our limousine. I'm asking myself the same thing. see if Canada's worst drivers ever know how to use their side mirrors. We're having them reverse a limousine around a figure eight course. Oh, I'm losing my other mind! Will Michael use his passenger side mirror? I'm using it right now. Amazing! Will he use his driver's side mirror? No. 
You want to use both mirrors, Michael? You can't use just one. After a few more mishaps, Michael gets the hang of proper mirror use. You're doing great, Michael. Thank you. But he does tend to get mesmerized by one mirror. Oh, you're using the wrong mirror. Other mirror. Instead of referencing both mirrors. Other mirror, other mirror. Coming around the second loop of the eight, Michael has to stop and reposition 12 times. Actually, I think I'll reposition a little. But he doesn't hit another thing. Well done, sir. Kevin goes without referencing his mirrors. Look at your mirrors. I am looking at my mirrors. Look, you're going to hit something right away. Okay, all right, no problem. Kevin. No problem. Don't freak out. I've got this. While Kevin gets repositioned, so does Angelina. You know what his mirrors are feeling, eh? You know what people do in the back of his face? Well, normally they go to grads and they have chaperones in them, eh? Why would you think they have a mirror on the ceiling, Shelby? They have side mirrors so you can see yourself approaching a tight squeeze. Oh, wait, wait. I'm getting too close to that red thing. Too close, too close. It's nice to see that Kevin is using his side view mirror. Kevin is so focused on his driver's side mirror. Watch your front and swing. Yeah. He's failing to notice the other side. Behind you, you're hitting things. What? what? Yes, you are. Look behind you. When Kevin finishes, he's still hitting things. <laughs> Dale has no idea what she should see in her mirrors. You can see me? Mm -hmm. Can you see this hand? Yeah. Perfect. That's what you need to see. It seems that Andrew has to start at the beginning with her every time she puts the car in reverse. I have to re-explain basic reverse steering to Dale. If you want to go to your right in reverse, do you turn left or right? Left. No! I have to re-explain the S-turn to Dale. It's like a brand new lesson every time. And then I have to re-explain front-end swing. 